my channel and welcome. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we are going to talk about 13 easy ways to lose the water retention. We can retain water in so many ways so quickly, especially as women. So today I want to share with you 13 easy tips and tricks to get rid of that excess water retention, therefore seeing a better weight loss on the scale. So if you're new, make sure that you're subscribed and that your bell is turned on so you don't miss a single video. Give this one a big thumbs up if you love these tips and tricks. And I can't wait to share with you 13 easy ways to get rid of that water retention. We all hate water retention. We all hate water weight because it isn't a true indicator of our weight loss or our weight in general when we step on the scale. But the reality is the human body is comprised of 60% water. Excess water retention is called edema. Generally, it's a harmless term, unless it's relating to some type of a medical condition revolving around your heart, your liver, or kidney, or issues relating to those organs. But generally, water retention or edema is completely harmless. And as women, we tend to have quite a bit of water retention around our favorite time of the month or not. So that's the time that we as women usually will see quite a bit of water retention. So we all want to know how the heck do we get rid of this water retention safely and effectively. So number one is exercise on a regular basis. Yes, my friends, exercising, although we think it increases water retention, sore muscles, water retention, exercising on a regular basis actually can help shed excess water. In fact, exercise is the quickest short-term way to do just that, to shed excess water retention. Did you know that the average fluid loss or water loss during exercise in one hour is 16 to 34 ounces of water? That all depends on the exercise that you're doing, how much you're sweating, the clothing that you're wearing, but you can burn basically a bottle of water in an hour of exercise. Also during exercise, your body will take that water and shift it into your muscles to help rebuild and repair those. You do need to make sure that you're hydrating during your workout, continuing to drink water even though you are shedding so much water. But if you're looking for a pretty quick way to get rid of that excess water retention, exercise is a great way to do just that. Number two is sleep more. Sleeping is just as important for weight loss and water retention as exercise and the food that we eat every single day. Sleep can also affect the renal nerves in our kidneys. Those nerves are what regulate our body, keeping sodium and water. Therefore, keeping excess water and having water retention is regulated by our kidneys. Adequate sleep every night will help manage that, will help your kidney shed that extra sodium and water, therefore shedding the water retention. So if at all possible, it's important to get between seven to nine hours of sleep every night. Number three is stress less. When we're stressed out, our body produces cortisol. Cortisol can lead to water retention as well as fluid retention in our body. Water retention and fluid retention means a weight gain on the scale. By stressing less and controlling our stress, it helps our bodies not produce cortisol. Therefore, our body doesn't hold on to as much water and fluid retention. So do your best to live a stress-free life. Now, I know life happens and sometimes things can be incredibly stressful, but if you really try to be mindful of how you're feeling and reducing your stress even just a little bit, that should help with your body retaining the water. Number four is take some electrolytes. Take an electrolyte supplement. So electrolytes basically help pump your body full of magnesium and potassium, which both play a role in if our bodies and how our bodies retain fluid. When your electrolytes become too low or even too high, it signals our body to retain water. It's just a natural function of our body when our electrolytes dip down or skyrocket. You should tailor your ingestion of electrolytes based on your water intake. If you are someone who drinks a lot of water, chances are you'll want to substitute with some type of an electrolyte. Now, if you're someone who doesn't drink a lot of water, electrolytes may not be necessary. Also, if you work out a lot or you sweat a lot, or even if you live in a climate that's very hot and you find that you are sweating, that's when you're losing electrolytes. So getting an electrolyte supplement may be beneficial for you as well. Number five is manage your salt intake. Watch how much salt 
you're ingesting. Sodium, the kind that you ingest from salt, is the number one most common electrolyte found in the human body. It also plays a major role in hydration. So if your sodium levels are too high or too low, it can also lead to water retention. A high salt intake, usually coming from processed foods, generally leads to our bodies retaining a little bit more water. Where diets that come from whole real foods, things that are grown in the ground, on a tree, or harvested, generally contributes to less water retention in our body. Number six is take a magnesium supplement. Magnesium is another one of the main functions of electrolytes. Magnesium has over 600 roles in the human body. And in fact, taking a magnesium supplement is beneficial for women who are pregnant, post-pregnant, and during our menstrual cycle. A magnesium supplement has been shown in women to decrease the water retention on our menstrual cycle, as well as any cramping that comes along with that cycle. This happens because magnesium plays very well with electrolytes and sodium, which those three pieces control the amount of water that our body stores. If you feel that you are lacking magnesium in your diet, it's important to ask your doctor or your physician about the benefits of taking a magnesium supplement. Number seven is another supplement. Take a dandelion supplement. Dandelion is an herb used as an alternative medicine to reduce water retention. In fact, bodybuilders and athletes who need to drop water retention very quickly for events or shows will often utilize dandelion extract as a supplement. Basically how it works is it signals your kidneys to expel more urine as well as sodium and water. So that's the effect of the dandelion supplement is it triggers your kidneys to expel any excess water in your body. Just be mindful that taking a dandelion supplement will increase the amount of times that you need to use the bathroom in a given five hour period. Number eight, as crazy as it may sound is drink more water to shed more water. Our bodies are always trying to create a healthy balance. So if we are dehydrated or we're not drinking enough water, our body wants to hold on to that water to make sure that the balance is achieved and that we are hydrated and healthy. Also achieving your daily water goal is important for both your kidney and your liver health. It's also good for general health, helps with brain function and helps with fat loss. On the flip side, we don't want to drink so much water that we're basically over consuming or over indulging in water. The bottom line is, or the trick of the trade is when you're thirsty, drink water. When you're no longer thirsty, stop drinking. Don't just drink water to drink water. You should definitely drink more water in hot human environments or when you're exercising. A good way to gauge whether or not your body has enough water is to watch the color of your urine. Essentially, you want your urine to be very, very light yellow to clear. That shows that you're hydrated and that your body has enough water. Number nine is focus on certain healthy foods. And I'm gonna share some foods with you that help eliminate water retention. Some of those foods are potassium rich foods, dark green leafy vegetables, beans, bananas, avocados, tomatoes, and yogurt all help eliminate excess water. There are also some herbs that are shown as an alternative form of medicine that help with water retention. And those herbs are corn silk, horsetail, parsley, hibiscus, garlic, love me some garlic, fennel, and nettle. Number 10 is cut your carbs. Don't eliminate your carbs, but cut your carbs. The reason cutting carbs can help with water retention is carbs are stored in the liver as glycogen. Glycogen brings in water from your body and stores water. Every gram of glycogen that you store, say three to four grams, water is generally stored right along with it. Did you ever wonder why people could lose weight so quickly when switching over to a low carb diet? Basically what they're losing is all of the stores of glycogen in their body. Basically they're losing all of the stored water weight. Also low carb diets will help drop your insulin levels, therefore dropping your sodium and water retention right along with those levels in your kidneys. Take a look at your carb intake. Maybe try reducing a little bit if you find that you are retaining a lot of water. If you're just feeling kind of sluggish, try either reducing your carbs a little bit or changing the types of carbs that you're eating. Switch from white rice to brown rice or white bread to whole wheat bread and see if that helps. Number 11 is music to my ears and that is to drink coffee. Drink coffee or tea. Coffee and tea are natural diuretics. 
Coffee and tea, the consumption of those has been shown in the short term to increase the amount of times that you urinate as well as slightly decrease water retention. So try combining caffeine and water. That's the golden ticket. That's the mix that really helps your body. Make sure you're drinking enough water, but you're also adding some caffeine, which again is a not natural diuretic. And just be mindful that it's going to cause a very slight loss in water retention, but a loss in water retention nonetheless. Number 12 is change your habits. And that's as simple as lowering the amount of processed foods that you're eating and watching your salt intake. Also avoid sitting for long periods, get up and move around, let your circulation flow, and adding in regular exercise is another great way to reduce your water retention. Also be mindful that certain medications can cause water retention, so make sure that you're checking with your physician to see if the medications that you're taking can cause you to retain water. Also a reminder that either over or under consumption of things such as coffee, water, alcohol, minerals, and salt can cause water retention. Basically have a healthy balance. Everything in moderation, don't over or under consume. And number 13, if you're really struggling with water retention and trying all 12 of these tips and tricks doesn't work for you, maybe consider a prescription water pill. These can be prescribed by your physician to treat chronic water retention and water weight gain. Just make sure you're consulting your physician to see if this is an option for you. Try to exhaust all of the more natural methods to lose that water retention, but if it comes to needing some type of a water pill, just make sure that you're checking with your doctor and your physician before you're taking any pills, whether they're over the counter or prescribed. Again, if you have chronic water retention, make sure you check in with your physician to see if maybe you have an underlying medical condition that is causing that. The bottom line of this tips and tricks, these 13 things we can do to decrease water retention is be mindful of the foods that you're eating, the sodium that you're ingesting, make sure you're exercising, drinking your water, choosing good foods, and everything in moderation. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that these 13 ways to shed that excess water weight really helps you out. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Also, I'd love it if you join my community here on YouTube, hit the little subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. Make sure you're commenting down below. Let me know, do you guys have any other tips and tricks to shed that excess water weight? And remember, this is really the biggest thing to take away from today's video you cannot gain two, three, four pounds overnight. Generally, when we see a big jump on our weight on the scale, it's due to water retention. So just keep that in your mind and do whatever you can to decrease the amount of water that your body is retaining. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. And as always, I appreciate your support of my channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye.